What is an individual? What you're looking at here is a siphonophore. It's one of our favorite animals here at the Dunn Lab, particularly because of that question. A siphonophore moves and looks like one long animal, but if you look closer, you realize it's a colony of jellyfish, all attached to one long stem and swimming together, and each doing a separate job for the group. So is each piece on the siphonophore an individual, or is the whole colony the individual? It's sort of both. Here's Dr. Casey Dunn. So instead of just being a single individual, they're colonial animals. They all grow from the same embryo just through a budding process, and they remain attached, and they, they, they share a circulation system. But the really striking thing about siphonophores is that not all of the members of these colonies do the same things. So really, it's as if you were to continuously bud conjoined twins throughout your entire life. So whole bodies, except that some of these twins only fed, others of them only reproduced, others just had legs, and some were just giant hearts moving the blood for everybody. In our own bodies, clearly we function as individuals, but when you look at what we're made out of, we're made of a, a whole bunch of cells, and each of those cells is equivalent to uh, cells that live on their own. So what is the individual in, in a human even? Is it the cell? Uh, is, it, is it the body as a whole? Or, or is it both? And, and what does this mean for the way that evolution acts on the structure? This is Sophia Tintori from the Dunn Lab at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. Thanks for watching.